Look at me, look at me. You looking? Yo, that's how I started the last video, so that's how I should start this one too, right? Okay, so here's the skinny. The skinny is that I didn't intend for the last video to be two videos, I intended for it to be one, but then the last video was already 20 minutes and I was like, ugh, there's like 40 more minutes of footage that I wanna put into this one. And then I was like, I don't have enough footage for the for the second video before I start like, it, it was kind of weird. Like it, it would have been like a two minute long video after like a 50 minute long video. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, so here's where we're at, basically. the pattern is all done and next on the agenda is to cut it out of the muslin for the sample sew it the sample all together and then fit it on my dress form the thing is that already all happened i'm in the future now which i guess is usually how most intros work the other thing that i want to tackle in this video was sourcing the fabrics um so i'm gonna scoot over so that i can put images on on the camera for the sourcing of the material, I kind of covered this in the last video, but basically what I did is I kind of stalked other people that have made the dress and looked at what material they were using, and then I went on like a Google deep dive of that material. I also have just an extensive material stash, so um, here's what I found in that. My roommate left. She went to the mall, um, she was doing some shopping, so that means I have access to my shelves, like easier access. Um, so I'm gonna dig through some of the fabrics. I'm pretty sure I have a red satin that I can use as well as a white for like the lining slash petticoat for the skirt. Um, I also, I think I have red sequins um, and I wanna check and see if I do before I buy any fabric because then like I don't have to buy any fabric. So. Let's see, let's see what I got, I, cause I don't know. I hit the jackpot almost immediately. There's so much of this too, I definitely don't need to buy red sequins. There's like so much of this. This white bridal satin that has this like, you can't really tell it's kind of dark over here, but it has like a matte side that's kind of nice. Um, I'm gonna keep it out just in case I want to use it, but I think it's gonna be, it's gonna look like too nice. If you get me. Um, this, chiff like, white chiffon, I don't have a lot of it. Um, I might be able to use pieces of it as like just ripped pieces at the bottom. Do like the top maybe out of the nice stuff and then have like some of this with like the raw edge at the very bottom. So we'll keep this out and I might even have more of this in that bin. I have this white tool. Um, I don't think I'm actually gonna use it but I'll keep it out just in case I want it. In case I feel like I need some more like texture or whatever on the petticoat. <laughs> oh, I thought this was muslin. It is not. Okay, I'm putting half of this back, um, but I found more of the chiffon and I found more of the white bridal satin. And then this other one that I found was muslin, it's not, it's going back. I found the world's tiniest scrap of the um, red lining that I was looking for. So that's not super helpful. I can maybe get a couple pieces out of this. Um, I found more white chiffon. And I found this like white cotton and this white lace. I don't know if I'm gonna be using any of this. I'm just gonna keep it out because sometimes the bins suck. Well, it looks like we are buying red satin. So, okay. Like pretty good material stash, but also not really. 
Um, yeah, so we got sequins covered. I don't have to order more sequins. I literally found the sequins that I would have needed um, online, but now I don't. I don't need them. I'm glad I didn't buy them because I have an excess of sequins, apparently. Second, okay, I swore I had more red satin than that. Apparently I don't. That's fine because I know where to get satin pretty cheap. One of my absolute favorite places to buy satin and like just general fabrics on the internet is Psy Fabrics. They're like an incredible LA business. I adore them. When I lived in downtown LA and I could walk to the fabric district, if I couldn't find something there, I would order it from Psy Fabrics. It's literally where I get all of my satins, all of my sequins, almost all of my sequins, like organza, lining material, anything that I need that I know is gonna be like 15 to $20 a yard at Joann's, which I actually, I'm a Joann's hater, I know. <laughs> I grew up there, I know her, but I was spoiled and I can't handle Joann's anymore. The red satin that I bought is the China Faux Silk lining, 58 inches wide, because that skirt is going to be the death of me. But it goes for $2.95 a yard, and I it's just a lining, so I don't need anything super heavy duty, you know? But also, if I did need something super heavy duty, I could get it from this same website for almost the same price. The white material for the underskirt that I got is a little bit, um, I think it's gonna be a little bit more heavy duty. It says lightweight, but I don't believe it almost. So I just got like a white black outlining. Um, it was $7.75 a yard. I didn't need nearly as much as the red. I think I bought two yards. Yeah, I bought two yards of white, four yards of red, and then I think I wanna say I probably have like four to five yards of sequins. So I'm all set on those. And then for the the mesh um, tool stuff that goes over top, the pleated accordion, I did buy the one on Etsy. I didn't want to, but then I was like, finding something else is gonna be just so much more difficult. I bought three yards just to be safe, um, especially for like the, the ruffles. I, most of them aren't gonna be very long because I'm making the torn dress, but just to be safe, it like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to have extra. You have just seen my fabric storage, so you know that. That's where we're at. So yeah, now enjoy my videos of me cutting out fabric because I thought that that was really important for some reason. Basically all I did was lay out the pattern pieces the way that they go on the muslin. Um, I'm showing you that I like using the thinner pins rather than the thicker ones. Also, please ignore this random piece. I realized later that I don't need it. I spent like 30 minutes trying to figure out how to lay out all the pattern pieces on the muslin and then I just went back to originally how I had them. I then took this big metal ruler and I traced out the side seam for the skirt, especially since I don't have like an actual pattern for that. And then I cut it so that I would have extra room to cut out the bodice pieces. And yeah, I just cut them out. I don't know why I included all this. For the notches, what you're gonna do is you wanna cut them in like an eighth of an inch or shallower. Especially on your seams that are one quarter inch, you don't wanna cut more than like a sixteenth of an inch. For the skirt piece, I found the measurement from my waist to the bottom of the hem and I'm just taking a tape measure and marking that out on the skirt from the waist sew line, not the, the cut line with the seam allowance to where the hem would be. I'm just marking that out in a circle. You can also do this from the point. It'll be a different measurement. And I find that using the tape measure along the seam, the seam line is easier for me. And it, I feel like it just gives me a better um, circle all around. Also, this pattern piece is weird because I don't need the full thing for the fitting of the skirt. I didn't um, cut the entire thing out. I basically just have short side seams. I was feeling stingy with material, I guess. Yeah, and then I, I just I just cut it out along that line. I didn't even pin it. That was good. fast and loose, baby, fast and loose. All cut out, don't forget to mark your notches. 
So there's a whole section that I didn't include here because it just felt really repetitive of me cutting out the rest of the skirt. Uh, basically for the other side of the skirt, I folded the fabric through the weft, which is like I didn't match up the selvages when I folded it. I folded it the opposite way. And then there's just an extra seam in that one so that that one would have the exact like full hem at that length. So that at least half of the skirt would have a semi-accurate hemline of what it eventually is gonna look like. I also just wanna reiterate that I filmed this section the same day that I filmed the pattern making. There are a couple bits of footage that I have a fan running and it's kind of loud. I do turn it off, um, so sorry about that, but that's just that's just what happened. It was really hot, I was really sweaty. I'm just, I'm just being real on the internet, guys. I'm just, man, I'm trying not to cut it all out. <laughs> I have to go rescue my sewing machine from the closet that it has been trapped in for the last two weeks. I'm going to be figuring out how to set up my sewing machine out here because I don't want to fuck up my desk setup um, and I don't really have any other desks unless I put it on the kitchen table. If I put it on the kitchen table, it won't move. So I'm going to figure out how to set up a standing sewing machine, which I have stood up and sewn before. It's um just like a little weird, but you know what? It'll probably be good for me. Okay, I got my sewing machine set up. It's it's not in frame. Um, I almost had a freak out because I couldn't find the power cord and I was terrified that something had happened to it and it got thrown away and that I wouldn't have a working sewing machine anymore. But I found it because I am always terrified of throwing away cords specifically for this reason like who the frick throws away cords okay yeah, let's start sewing and i'll show you guys um what i'm thinking about how i'm gonna have to do this because it is gonna be kind of interesting with the way that i've patterned the wrap and i'm uh it might not be like fully realized without the lining like what's going on if you feel me if you catch my drift Okay, I'm gonna reposition the camera now. Okay, so I actually have two camera angles set up. I have this one so that I can kind of show you what I'm doing, and then I have the close one of just the sewing machine, which I'll probably end up moving this one around. And also my camera's been overheating in like five minutes, so we'll see how long that lasts. Okay, so I'm just gonna start from the back probably. So I got my side back and my back, and I'm gonna pin them together. Great. Okay, so I'm just taking two pieces, and you can see my notches, so I'm going to line those up. I like to put a little pin there, and then I see my notches, I'm going to line up the edges and the notches, and put a little pin in the top like this, and then I always run my pins like this. I never run them like side to side like this, um, just because that's how I was taught. I was always taught like it's it doesn't let your fabric like slip side to side especially where I have this little bit of ease in the pattern. If you didn't watch my uncut video of the pattern making you don't know what ease is. Ease is basically what makes stuff round so it's anywhere from like a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch is really all that you want to go. Basically that just is extra on one side of your pattern so that it can make stuff round. Because we're going from a flat line, a flat surface, to round, you need like a little bit of difference in it to realize that. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So you just wanna like pull it tight, but don't like pull it, like stretch it. And basically just like distribute it evenly. Okay, I changed the presser foot. I also downed my um, my tension. You can see, you can see how it's like, you can see the bobbin thread on the front and then it's also kind of like wavy. That means the tension is way too high. So I'll have to like unpick this and do it again. We're living fast and wild, don't do this. The easiest way to unpick something don't use an exacto knife, but basically just get the top thread free from the ends of back stitching and just pull it out. 
my god, it's literally shaking the whole table. This footage is gonna be awful. I'm so sorry. This, this is where it's gonna get interesting, is the way that I have to sew the wrap on this front, on the front. Cool, so let's start off with our front pieces. We want this side over top. And then, okay, so that is our middle there. So this is what it's gonna look like. These pieces can be sewn on like this. Okay, so I'm basically going in and pinning all of my notches, like so. And then I'm gonna pin the ends together, like so. Okay, so see how it doesn't line up there, how it's uneven? That's called ease. So I'm basically gonna slide it and like give it a little tension until it matches up and then I'm gonna pin it in the middle. And if I feel like there's gonna be more ease that isn't gonna be like, that's gonna make it harder to sew, I'll pin it again on each side and basically try to make it as even as possible. Like I'll probably have to do that here because there's more ease on the top than there is on the bottom. So I'm basically gonna do my best to center the ease. it's kind of like a little bit like bubbly right there that's fine because it's on the other side of the seam allowance so that like literally like this is our seam allowance here at half an inch and this is just like the roundness and the fullness so i'm gonna pin both sides and then i'm gonna sew it and then we'll come back i want to press my seams so i have to clip my seams this side of the seam is pulling so that means i just need to clip like into it so that it has more ease to be pressed this side is going to be too big so i want to clip these into it so we're just going to clip in along the curve and usually i would just clip the notches down um and you don't want to do this until you know it fits because Obviously, then you don't have any room to take it out because you've just cut your seam allowance. I'm gonna put both of these. This is like the most awkward, weirdest angle ever. And I'm like only gonna clip it where it needs it because otherwise that's just overkill. And then I'm gonna put a couple clips. I know that it goes in right here. So I'm gonna put just a couple clips in there. And then that side's done. Moving on to the skirt, because this is all done. We, we have our mistakes half that has just the absolute wildest side seams. Um, and that's definitely gonna be fun to figure out, but I need to sew the other half together first. I basically just need to take this edge that has the selvage and sew it at three quarter seams so that that then becomes our Probably center back is how I'll have it. And then um, this side will stay our side seam. And yeah, that's what it's gonna look like. Done. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna iron the seam open. Woo, thrilling content, thrilling. It's true, the ironing content was so thrilling, I had to cut it all out. You guys are really missing out. Wow, would you look at that? A back seam. Okay, I'm gonna sew the side seams together. Um, they're gonna be weird because the other ones are really short, but um, you'll see in a bit. Also, I might have to undo, oh, I should be fine. Um, well, um, I might have to undo a tiny bit of this center back seam just so that it fits over the mannequin because I didn't, add in anywhere for the zipper on the back of the skirt. And I have just realized that it's like a form-fitting skirt at the waist. Okay. I am gonna go back in on my center back seam and I'm just gonna eyeball like three inches down and add a back stitch. Um, it's not necessarily necessary, but because I'm gonna be unpicking a little bit, I wanna just throw one in. 
The skirt is all sewn. Honestly, this looks gigantic to me. Um, this is definitely way too much material, I think. Like, it's way too full. Um, so I may, I will probably end up taking, like, adjusting the angle of the side seams to eliminate some of the fullness at the bottom. But before that, we are going to sew the bodice to the, um, skirt. So I'm just gonna take our lovely center front notch and our center front notch and put them together and then match up our side seams. The center back is gonna be a little funky because of the um, zipper overlap. So let me show you what we're gonna do in just a second. I guess technically I should walk. I should have walked the circle skirt and the bodice pattern. Walking a pattern is basically when you're almost done you take your sew lines and you literally just like put them on top of each other um like the paper on top of each other and you just inch them along as if you're like almost sewing the paper together but flat and just make sure that you don't have an excessive amount of ease um you really don't want more than an inch eighth of an inch probably of ease uh, otherwise you're just gonna have ruffles and it's just gonna be really difficult to sew yeah but you want to walk your patterns to make sure that your patterns work and that everything is sized correctly and that nothing's not gonna match up basically that sounds like um like a lot of effort oh yeah so like I definitely should have walked it because they don't match at all here I go proving my own points. This is why you walk your patterns, always. Or at least check your measurements, bruh. Like, double check your math, man. It's not worth it when you have to fix it at this point. We're gonna think about this for a minute. Okay, so my math somewhere got messed up by about two inches, which is so fun. And this is why you walk patterns. Here's what I'm gonna do. We're playing this fast and loose, right? I'm gonna pin like the first quarter and then I'm going to mark where it comes to. And then I'm basically just taking this and taking my excess and then I'm basically just gonna mark where it should be lining up with the, um, with the side seam, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the back panel and then we are just gonna take the, um, the excess out of the side seam of the skirt. Does that make sense? I'm just gonna sew a thicker seam. My goodness, my math was so off somewhere. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna unpin everything. I love karma. This much excess. So I thought it looked gigantic. I'm going to iron this seam closed and then I am going to figure out how far in that is and then I'm just gonna sew a different straight line. Okay, we're figuring it out. Okay, that's flat. I'm just gonna take a straight ruler now and I'm just gonna mark like all the way down like where the new seam should be and then I'm just gonna sew it and then hope for the best. Here's where we at, this is our new line. I'm, I'm literally, I'm gonna sew it just again. And then, like, I'm not even, I'm not gonna cut it off. I'm not, I'm just gonna sew it, and then there's just gonna be extra fabric in there. And this is definitely gonna, like, interfere with the way that the fitting works, but I don't care enough. And I never do mock-ups anyways, so it's a good thing I did a mock-up today. Okay, I need to salvage off on the other side, because otherwise it won't lay correctly. So that's just like the finished edge of the fabric. Um, it like messes with the way that the muslin lays. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut like next to it, like that. And then I'm basically just gonna take it and tear a straight edge. Okie dokie, bro. Okie dokie. 
it's not much of a circle anymore. It's definitely more of an A-line. Definitely what I should have done for this seam, I probably will need to end up doing, taking this straight line that I did and curving it so that it's like flat width, you feel me? So then that just excludes like the, like all of this fabric probably. Like, yeah, like this is where I should have sewn the seam. What we're just gonna do instead is continue fast and loosening it. Fast, fast and, and, and loosing. We're just gonna keep the chaos going, honestly. And I'm just gonna sew, I'm, I'm gonna sew the bodice on. And then I'm gonna literally open my mannequin for the first time, my dress form, get it on there and 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 see how we're going from there. Oh, I also definitely measured it with from just the seam allowance and not where the finished seam is gonna be. So the side seams aren't gonna be even. I'm just so, I'm doing so good, I know. You know, just that sizing debacle really just threw me for a loop. I just don't know what to do anymore. Okay, let's try this again. So I am fitting it to the skirt, starting at the center front and then um, putting the side seams together, which are now like wild and weird. At this point, I started explaining how I'm gonna do the lapped zipper on the back. I realized I cut out patterning the back piece entirely out of the first episode. And if you don't watch the uncut patterning uh, video I'm making, then you'll have no idea about it. But basically the lapped zipper is just a piece, like if this is the zipper, and then, then a piece of fabric just goes over top of it and to get to the zipper it just like it's like a fly front jean is pretty much a lapped zipper so that's what i'm doing um the pattern just basically has three quarter of an inch excess added on both sides so it's like the pattern piece and then three quarters of an inch for the lap and then half an inch of seam allowance so depending on which side i'll explain it showing it but one side only gets folded over the seam allowance and the other side gets folded over all of it after that, I took this side. It doesn't necessarily have to be this side. I think it technically should be the other side because in women's clothing, it's always right over left. Um, I guess that doesn't really matter in cosplay unless you want it to. But I basically just took this side and I fold, I kept it folded over exactly how we ironed it with where we folded under the seam allowance and then under the overlap. So, so this is our fully folded. The zipper is gonna go on it like this so the center of the zipper matches up with the fold and then on the other side this side this second notch is our center front and that'll match up with the center of the zipper so then the the la the, the lapped part the flap covers the zipper it's like a like a um like the fly on a pair of like slacks or like button down jeans um basically is what i'm doing on the back of this dress if that made any sense. What I was just doing was just deciding which side was gonna stay open and which side was gonna, which side was gonna be the back behind the zipper and which side was gonna be the, the lapped over the zipper part. Okay, so on this side, I'm putting, there's gonna be like all of this extra material on this side. So basically I have this, this is my center back and it's folded on the skirt and then this, so there's two notches. This second notch is my center back. So I'm matching that up with the notch on the skirt. Instead of having it all folded over like the other side. So like this side, I basically just want like the seam allowance on the top folded over. Like I don't even necessarily have to have that bit folded over, but I'm going to. <gasps> I've just sewed it at the wrong freaking seam allowance the whole way across. That's so upsetting. It's fine, this is character building. We have a dress. I'm gonna... I'm gonna take a 15 minute break. Okay, I got it on the dress form. It took way too long. Um, but it's definitely too full in the bottom for my liking, even though there's gonna be a petticoat underneath. Um, so I do think I'm gonna put some like pins on the side seam and just take out some of this fullness. Um, yeah, and then we'll see about that. 
but I also, I might have a petticoat that I can put underneath it to see how it feels. Otherwise, we're just gonna have to play it by ear, which is how this whole thing has gone. So no diff. Um, there's like a little bit of some like gaping here, which is fine because it's like a mannequin and it's not a real human being, but um, yeah. Otherwise, um, I think it looks good. Sorry, I feel like that ended kind of abruptly, but like I said before, the first episode, this episode, and then probably 10 more minutes of the next episode, I thought we're all gonna go into one video under 20 minutes. I really underestimated how much footage I actually had. But, so this is now the whole first day that I spent working on cosplay encapsulated, and um, we did just pass the 30 minute mark, so I'm gonna cut it short. Uh, check me out on Twitch, that's where I'm the most active. Actually, that's probably a lie now. I'm getting back into Instagram stories, so check those out. You get to see stuff way early before the video drops. My YouTube Shorts page, it kind of goes crazy, not gonna lie, as well as my TikToks. Subscribe, like the video. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I'll see you guys. Goodbye.